Good to go. Go ahead, Mr. Carey. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Tonight is January 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Ellen, may we have roll call, please? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Here. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Tiago Wynn? Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. If we can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Lesser, please lead us. Thank you, Chuck. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. The United uh, States of America. 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 And to the Republic. Which, is, which is stands one nation. One nation. nation. God. Under God. Indivisible. indivisible. With, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Mr. Healy, I believe you have a motion for us. Uh, yes, I do. Um, I will move, um, as soon as I call this up. Um, yeah, I'll move to approve the uh, December 22nd, 2020 regular Board of Education minutes as in reference one. Thank you, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Any questions, comments, discussions? Seeing none with a motion on the floor and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to public comment. Anyone wishing to make comment? Please state your name and address and you have five minutes. Mr. Carey, we have two uh, members of the public waiting. We'll admit our uh, two members. Okay. Phone numbers 860-726. Go ahead, ma'am. Please state your name and address. You have five minutes. It's Kathleen Hanley Hochdorfer, and I live at 34 Dorchester Road. Um, I'm calling to advocate for a full return to school for um, students in elementary school in Weathersfield. Um, I know that you guys are in constant contact with the health department, and I think that that's important. I think community spread is a good data source to be looking at, but there's also a lot of research that's coming out now in peer-reviewed journals that I think the Board of Education should be paying some attention to. Um, some of the studies I wanna share, uh, there was one published this week um, by Duke University in North Carolina. And this study looked at 90,000 students and staff um, from October 15th to, uh, I'm sorry, August 15th to October 23rd. What they found was um, of those 90,000 students across 11 districts, there were 773 SARS-CoV-2 infections documented by molecular testing. Um, and there was contact tracing done and they determined that 32 of those infections were acquired within the schools. Most of those infections were adult to adult to other adults, so staff to staff. So this is staff members who are maybe eating lunch together or maybe aren't being so cautious with their masks when they're not with students. Um, there were zero instances of child to adult adult transmission of COVID-19 within the schools, um, And the, the authors concluded that at this time, there's not a medical reason to keep children out of school. There just isn't. Um, I also wanna speak a little bit to the hybrid versus the full-time model. Um, it's faulty to assume that hybrid models are reducing, reducing risk right now. Um, what, what the research is starting to indicate is that kids who are in a hybrid model 
um, they tend to have wider social networks with fewer controls, right? So we think about the kids who are home on these days home doing distance learning, and maybe they're with grandma and grandpa, and maybe they're in their home and there's not as many controls, masks aren't being worn. So what we're actually doing is increasing community transmission. Other students may be home with a babysitter or a neighbor. Um, and what we're finding is if we really want to limit how much spread happens in communities, one of the best things we can do right now is get kids in school full time where the proper controls can be implemented. Um, the last thing I want to speak to is um, this notion that we need to be doing deep cleaning on Wednesdays. So there's some research that came out in December of 2020. There's two studies. Um, I'm going to read directly from them. The chance of transmission through inanimate surfaces is very small and only in instances where an infected person coughs or sneezes on the surface and someone else touches that surface soon after the cough or sneeze do they get sick. I, I do not disagree with erring on the side of caution, but this can go to extremes not justified by data. Although periodically disinfecting surfaces and use of gloves are reasonable, especially in hospitals. I believe that fomites have not been in contact, that have not been in contact with an infected carrier for many hours do not pose a measurable risk of transmission in non-hospital settings. A more balanced perspective is needed to curb excesses that become counterproductive. So the Goldman published this in 2020, and there was a follow-up study um, by Mondelli and his crew in uh, Italy in 2020 that confirmed this. So I'm just speaking as a parent. I have a kindergartner and a third grader at Hanmer. Um, at this point, I think the safest thing we can do for our community is return our kids to school full time. The research is starting to show that. Um, and that's all I have to say. Chris? Thank you. Thank you, oh. you Mrs. Hackdorfer. Okay, we have You're welcome. two more members of the public. Our next uh, caller calling in 860 348 6606. Eight six zero three four eight. After this shot, Chris. Looks like they're still on mute. Yeah, eight six zero three four eight. You want to put them back in the queue, and then we'll do the other one, Michael. Nope, they left. Back, back in the waiting room, Chuck. Um, Thank you. We have our next caller, 860-422-5934. State your name and address for the record. Caller, can you unmute yourself, please? There you go, go ahead. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Kelly Fisher. I live at a uh, 38 old Peter Lane. Um, I sent an email earlier today to members of the Board of Education advocating for in-person learning. I'm the proud parent of a Hamner kindergartner and a Hamner fourth grader. Um, I know a lot of families have been dealing with the challenges of the pandemic and um, remote learning and parents working full time and, and my family is no exception to that. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to be able to have help on the days that my children are home. That being said, uh, we have observed challenges with my fourth grader in terms of um, a lack of structure and, and discipline. And although he does his best and his teacher is amazing and fantastic, he's not really learning, in my opinion, to the ability that um, he's able to. And the truth is, it's really been most difficult for my kindergartner and for our younger learners who do not read yet and are not proficient with technical skills. When she's in school, she's thrilled, loves to be there and could not be more happy. At home, um, you know, she expresses a disinterest in writing and math, and we're behind on a lot of the uh, learning assignments that her teacher has assigned remotely. And although we try to make up for them on the weekends when we're able to, it's caused a lot of emotional stress for her in terms of um, her disinterest and, and lack of interest in the digital opportunities to learn. Um, so all that being said, I realize that there's no great answer 
good answer to the situation that we all find ourselves in. But um, knowing that our surrounding districts have successfully be able, been able to engage in, in more in-person learning opportunities, I would just advocate and encourage for that within Weathersfield as well. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we have two in the queue. I'm going to uh, admit again, uh, 860-348-6606. Three four eight six six zero six. Can you unmute yourself, please? There you go. Go ahead. Please state your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Thank you, Christine Mori, fifty two Orchard Hill Drive. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today, uh, and I want to thank you so much for sending out the survey today regarding the return to in person possibilities. Uh, as a parent of four children in your school system, one at the high school, one at the middle school, and two at the elementary level, it is just great to know that there is a possibility for a full return. I am um, speaking today on behalf of my concerns in regards about the slow rollout for the return to school, which was pr proposed in the fall. And I'm calling tonight to ask you to reconsider that rollout, um, which initially showed small groups of students coming in at two weeks at a time. And then, you know, we're taking six weeks or longer to get all school, all students back into school. I too, like the first caller, have um, several bits of research in front of me speaking to the hybrid model and the effects that it's having on students. Uh, one researcher stating that the hybrid model is probably among the worst that we could be putting forward if our goal is to stop the virus from getting into schools. We know that it's not being spread in schools, but the hybrid model is encouraging students to do things outside of school. Kids and adolescents are inclined to hang out with their peers on these days off when they're not at school. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the exact high school attendance is, but I, I'm sure that if you pulled up the attendance, it is extremely low and has been on a decline in the recent weeks. Whereas a full-time school model um, really allows kids to engage with each other and can focus them in primarily two places. You know, they can be at school and they can be at home. And I think that's such a gift to them. I would like to speak to the lack of social emotional learning that's happening. Unfortunately, um, you know, the second step rollout did not occur, at least for my fourth graders at Webb. And I feel like being in school full time would allow them that potential to have greater um, occurrences and instances with the social emotional learning, which is what they're craving for. When we sit together at the dinner table, that is what they talk about, their interactions with their peers, their time at recess, and they don't get those opportunities when they're at home. We are, we are keeping a, a tight a tight knit here so that we don't add to that COVID pool, but what we are looking for is the opportunity for them to have more interaction with their peers at school, and I think that would fill their, fill their bucket. I know I just got off the Silas Dean Middle School PTA meeting and they were talking about how it will be hard for them to return to school because of the social distancing impact in that building. And I do think we need to reflect on the other mitigation strategies besides just social distancing. We've got kids with masks, which is the number one mitigation strategy. Our students are doing so well with that. We also have frequent hand washing. And I think if we continue to implore those mitigation strategies, then it's as feasible to be six feet apart. And if that's not possible, then we rely on those other mitigation strategies. But being in school full time is something I would appreciate us considering. And also I would just like for you to think about um, a possible revision to the fall rollout plan. And is there any possibility that families, caregivers, community members could be on the team that is creating that plan and making the decision I know that we as stakeholders would appreciate having some attention and some, um, some speaking voice in order to creating that plan for what it might look like in the upcoming weeks. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Mori. Thank you. Mr. Carey, I have uh, two more individuals uh, that are in the queue. I'm going to admit uh, area code 908 675 -6842. Phone number 908-675-6842. Can you unmute yourself, please? Phone 
Is there another one in the queue, Mr. Rabbit? There is, sir. You want to switch them out? And if need be, I have one I can read into, whatever. Okay. All right. We have uh, 802 three, four, five, four, one, seven, one. Eight oh two three four five four one seven one. If you can unmute yourself, please. And Mr. Carey, if you'd like to read the uh, email that we received today. Yeah, I'll read that right now. Thank you. The email. Dear Superintendent Emmett, Chairman Carey, Vice Chairman Healy, and all members of the Board of Education, I bring to you a question for which I am seeking clarification. At the December 22nd, 2020 Board of Education meeting, Mr. Emmett informed the board and everyone attending the meeting that while it's encouraged that teachers to teach in their classrooms instead of their homes on remote Wednesdays, it is not mandatory that they do so. Most recently, via written communication in a recent PTO meeting, principals have stated that teachers will now be required to come into the building on Wednesdays. This is a vastly different directive than what Mr. Emmett has stated at the 12-22-20 Board of Education meeting. Are the teachers now being mandated to be in schools on Wednesday? If so, did Mr. Emmett communicate this with all the WPS, WPS personnel in the Board of Education and the parents? I'm not arguing the merits of teaching teachers educating from their classroom versus remotely. I'm simply looking for clarification and transparency. I thank you in advance for your time and for your response. Most sincerely, Christine Dukes, 301 Knott Street. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Thank you, Ms. Dukes. Um, we still have 908-675-6842 in the waiting room. Gonna try one more time. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. You're unmuted. Go ahead. If you can say your name and address and you have five minutes, thank you. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. This is Jenna Cisco, 77 State Street and 908-675-6842. And I'm just calling in to state my support for a return to full-time learning for our elementary school students. Um, I emailed the Board of Education members and Mr. Emmett today as well with additional information. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Cisco. Okay. Mr. Carey, no one further waiting in the queue? Thank you. Moving on to communications, Mr. Emmett. Yes, thank you, Mr. Kerry. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. Uh, I have a few items for you this evening to bring you up to speed on. Um, this evening, the board uh, will take action on setting the graduation date for the class of 2021. Um, as you know, we now have, through uh, state statute, the ability to set the graduation date prior to April 1st. Um, at this particular time, we do not have a um, clear understanding of what things are gonna look like with regard to the pandemic. Um, so in terms of what the graduation ceremony looks like, we're gonna plan for both. We're gonna plan for that back to the cove, like we've always done. And then we'll have an alternative in the event that we cannot um, bring a large group of people together. So there'll be a lot more forthcoming on this, but uh, we're hopeful that we get that graduation date set this evening for planning purposes. Uh, in terms of COVID-19 numbers, as of this afternoon, the district has had a total of 160 positive cases of COVID, 126 cases have involved students, uh, and 34 positive cases uh, in staff members. What is interesting, uh, I went back and took a look at the uh, graphic back in November, on November 12th. On November 12th, the district was dealing with a total of 28 cases. And now two months later, we've gone from 28 cases to 160. So we've definitely seen an increase in the number of positive cases impacting both our students as well as our staff. 
I do want to talk about the issue of vaccinations. Um, you've probably been seeing that uh, everyone is chopping at the bit to uh, get vaccinated. Currently, the state is vaccinating uh, those individuals considered to be in phase 1A. Um, for us in the school district, that is our school nursing staff. So our nursing supervisor, as well as several of our nurses have already received their first dose of the vaccine and actually will be receiving, some will be receiving their second dose next week. In terms of phase 1B, that is currently being discussed at the state level, um, our understanding is that educators are listed as part of phase 1B. The district has submitted our staff roster to the VAMS coordinator for upload. Uh, the VAMS coordinator is Karen Tomzik from the town, and that information is ready to be uploaded. What was interesting is that you might have seen on the news last week, there were a couple of private schools as well as a few public school districts where teachers had been able to be vaccinated in phase 1A. That was done in error. And I did contact uh, Charles Brown from the CCHD to confirm that. So right now, school districts are not allowed to upload their staff into the VAMS system. I do also want to let you know that tomorrow, uh, WPS staff, myself, Chloe Bobrowski, our nursing supervisor, and Michael Barabal, our uh, interim security director, are going to be meeting with town staff as well as CCHD staff to talk about the discussion of logistics uh, to distributing the vaccine to eligible employees. Um, when you look at phase 1B, one of the things you can easily see is that you're looking at north of 800,000 people getting vaccinated. We certainly want to be able to provide the opportunity for our staff to get it as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. So there'll be much more information forthcoming on this as we go through this process. Um, again, I've said this before at a previous board meeting, I think our people on the front lines need to get this vaccine. It is not mandatory. Um, I want to be clear on that piece as well. I do also want to let members of the community know with regard to um, students at this point in time, uh, students being vaccinated is not part of the discussion from what we've heard either through the Department of Public Health or through the va uh, Vaccination Allocation Committee. Um, the Vaccination Allocation Committee meets uh, every Tuesday. Um, that information is available on CTN. So if you're interested in uh, seeing that process, um, please uh, join their virtual meetings, uh, CTN, every Tuesday at noontime. I want to talk a little bit about winter sports. You might have heard yesterday CIAC has reported that uh, they are looking to move forward with a winter sports season. Um, we are currently awaiting the final decision from CIAC concerning uh, winter sports. The CIAC Board of Control is scheduled to meet on Thursday. And Mr. Maltesi will have additional information forthcoming for athletes this week. Um, as was the case during the fall season, mitigation strategies are going to be very important in allowing our athletes to compete. In addition to that, um, the CIEC has identified several sports, including wrestling, uh, dance, competitive cheer, um, as, being, as well as indoor track as being sports that are higher risk and are not supporting a season. I've already talked with Mr. Maltesi yesterday to um, come up with alternative ideas to allow our students to participate and be part of a team. Um, the other piece I want to be clear about with regard to the winter sports, CIEC does not um, encourage uh, spectators. Um, one of the things we've looked to do during the fall is to give our parents the opportunity to see their kids participate, and we've limited uh, participation of parents uh, to mom and dad. We're going to look to do that again. Um, we're going to certainly need the cooperation of the community to make sure that we're staying within guidelines and we're maintaining good social distance. The other piece with our sports that are moderate risk, one of the things I need to be clear about with basketball and ice hockey, it is wearing masks. So it's going to be a new experience for our athletes that they're going to have to get used to. So um, the expectation is next Tuesday, we would start with training and then we would have a condensed uh, spring or winter schedule um, for our students. Again, our experience with fall sports, we were fortunate. We did not end up having to um, pull the plug on any of our fall sports. Um, quarantining was limited to individual students. Um, obviously, being in a gym, we're all inside during this time period, so we are going to have to really work hard to make sure our mitigation strategies are in place. Um, one of our callers mentioned earlier, uh, we sent out a survey uh, late this afternoon to um, gauge where parents are at with regard to remote learning uh, in relation to in-person learning. Uh, I am committed to making sure that we are bringing our kids back in. I want to make sure, and I've said this all along, we do it as safely as we possibly can. 
That's a key piece here. Um, we've seen over the past two months, the number of families that have opted for full remote has gone up rather dramatically. And we need this survey data to assess whether or not we're going to see these families return or if they're going to continue to utilize remote learning. This will allow us the opportunity to understand how many students are physically going to be in the building and will allow us to adjust our mitigation strategies. So that information went out today. Uh, again, thank you to all the parents that have already uh, submitted responses. I've gotten multiple emails as well. We'll certainly respond to those parents that have emailed. Um, again, we wanna make sure we get the data right and we wanna make sure that we're making the best possible decision in terms of getting our kids back in safely. Uh, tomorrow, we begin with the synchronous learning for um, students in grades K through eight. Um, the, one of the early call or uh, the public comment uh, with the email talked about staff members being in. Let me make sure I clarify this. This was something that came up at uh, board comment at the last meeting. Um, we talked about encouraging staff members to come in and we've clarified to make sure that it is the expectation that staff members are coming in on synchronous Wednesdays. I will tell you that for some staff members who may have extenuating circumstances, they've been encouraged to talk with their principal. So for example, if somebody has an emergency childcare situation, talk with your principal and we'll work with staff members to make sure that we can support that. Um, we are clear that we want to make sure we're increasing instructional time for kids. That's what it's about here. It's about kids. Not to and, and, and with regard, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll talk about it later, Michael. Okay, thank you. So we want to make sure that we are taking the necessary steps to engage our kids and make sure that our kids have opportunities for learning. So that's the piece with regard to the synchronous learning. As you know, um, with regard to the high school, the high school will shift to synchronous learning at the end of the month. The ultimate goal here, folks, is to increase the amount of in-person learning that takes place and making sure that our kids are engaged. So with that, that's communications this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. Mr. O'Reilly, I believe you have a motion for us. A uh, motion that the Wethersfield Board of Education set the 2021 Wethersfield High School graduation date for June 11th, 2021. Per state statute, Board of Educations are now allowed to set a graduation prior to April 1st. Typically, the standard school year is 180 days. The Wethersfield Public Schools typically plans for 182 school days. This year, the state has allowed districts the opportunity for a 177-day school year. Our current calendar contains 179 student days. Based upon this information, I propose a graduation date for Wethersfield High School 2021 of Friday, June 11th, 2021. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Mr. Emmett, any comments, discussion? No, at this point in time, uh, this is a Friday. It's certainly, it's a preferred day. Uh, originally, we were looking at the end of the school year being on uh, Thursday, and obviously with the Cove Park, um, opportunity Thursday is not good because DMV stays open late. So the Friday works. I know it's uh, very popular among family members. So say, Tiago, put it down on your uh, calendar. Judge. Yes, Mr. Lesser. Um, Michael, are we um, developing contingency plans in case we um, decide not to use, do that typical outdoor ceremony and do something like we did last year, depending on where we are with COVID in June? Absolutely, sir. That's one of the things that the uh, our graduation coordinator, Suzanne Curtin, myself and uh, Terry Usko, our assistant principal and the uh, administrator for grade 12, we met last week to talk about this process and, you know, what we would need for a Cove Park experience. And we do have a uh, drive through graduation under our belt. And, you know, ultimately, I thought that that was quite successful. We got a lot of positive feedback, both from uh, parents as well as students on that. Thank you. And as a graduate of one of those, as a parent of one of those drive through graduates, it was extremely well done. And some people felt it was even better. But, um, you know, different feelings in terms of it was better, but all felt that it was a job well done and, and really honored our graduates. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none with a motion on the table in a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstention, motion passes, thank you. Mr. Michaels, I believe you have a motion for us. Thank you, Mr. Carey. I move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve an unpaid leave of absence for ID 902096 under the provisions of Article 11, Section E of the current agreement between the Wethersfield Board of Education and the CSEA SEIU Local 2001. This request is for an unpaid leave beginning January 13th, 2021 and continuing through February 28th, 2021 of the current school year. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Healy. Mr. Emmett, any comments? Uh, this is an extension of a, a current leave. Um, this is supported by the administration. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none with a motion to second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to reports and discussion items. Update on the substitute pool. Mr. Donahue, thank you for joining us tonight. So good evening and, and thank you, Mr. Carey, and, and thank you to the board for allowing me to join you and speak for a few minutes about what I think is a really good news story uh, for our district and for some of our um, residents in Weathersfield. Uh, as you all may recall, back in December, a governor uh, Governor Lamont authorized a waiver that allowed uh, the minimum requirement of a bachelor's degree to be waived in, allow in, in allowance of uh, substitute teachers in the state of Connecticut. And with that decision, uh, what it did is it brought a brand new pool of candidates to us, um, that pool of candidates, specifically uh, current college students. Um, so we took a lead from another school district and we made the move to advertise a substitute position to our college student community out in Wethersfield and neighboring towns. Uh, we posted that in mid-December on uh, our district website and on our social media sites uh, with a prerequisite that students would need to be at least 18 years old, uh, would need to be high school graduates, are currently enrolled in a bachelor's degree program and have some experience working with children. Uh, the good news story is in that within a week of uh, advertising that to the community, we had uh, over three dozen college students in the area express interest to come in and help our, uh, our school district and uh, start joining us here in the month of January. So we partnered with Kelly Education, our staffing firm. Um, we've recently hired 15 college students through Kelly Education to come in and start working in our five ele elementary schools and our Thanks. middle school. Um, they started last Monday, the, the, the first day we were back after the holiday break. Um, you know, the, one of, there, there are many great things associated with um, this move, but of the 15 students that we've hired, 12 of them are graduates of Wethersfield High School. Uh -huh. um, of the 15 that we've hired, 13 of them are currently pursuing a degree in education. And so they're near-term uh, near educators. Um, they're excited about being in schools. Uh, they've hit the ground running and they've done a wonderful job. Um, of the 15, we have six seniors in college. We have four juniors in college. Uh, we have uh, four sophomores in college. And we actually have one college freshman who has hit the ground running at one of our elementary schools. Uh, they've done a fabulous job. Uh, they've been a, a much needed resource to our school community. I can tell you that the feedback that we've gotten from the principals is extremely positive. Uh, the feedback that we've gotten from our teaching staff and support staff in the school is extremely positive. And I can tell you, um, to, a, to a student, to a person, all 14 of them that have arrived, and I know the 15th is, is going to arrive next week, all of them are excited about the opportunities that they've had to work alongside students, uh, either one-on-one -on -one in small groups. Um, again, they're future educators. They're learning from uh, some elder peers uh, on the job, and it's been a home run. I, I think everybody to a person has said this has been a big win for us, and we're only on day, I think, six of having these students with us. Um, many of them will, will stay with us for most of the month of January until they return to school, and some of them have already indicated that they have some availability to stay with us throughout the school year and work in, a, in and amongst their classes. Um, when they have a day off from school, they'll, they'll be willing to help us out. Um, so it's been an invaluable resource. Um, uh, I'm really proud of the students that have hit the ground running. I'm proud of our schools for opening up the doors to these students. Um, and I think it's a great mark for our community. So, so thank you for the, to the board for allowing this. Uh, thank you 
to our school principals for uh, creating this opportunity for these college students. And thank you for such a, a warm embrace from, from the community. I, again, 15 college students working alongside our, 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 our youngest students in Weathersfield and doing a fabulous job. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. Anyone with any questions or comments? Mr. Carey, I might suggest that when we uh, get to the point where these um, individuals are, are settled in, I'd love to have them come back to a board meeting and uh, share their experience with the board at a future board meeting. Excellent, yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Donahue. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, announcements and information. Board members, please check your packet. See if there's meetings coming up. If you can't make it, please let the chair know. Uh, Board of Education's meeting held with the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative meeting, WEC, 1-11-21, Ms. Granado. Oh, I'm unfortunately on 1-11-21, we had to uh, cancel due to a uh, family issue from one of the uh, organizers of it, but we will be doing our February uh, Excellent. meeting. Th thank you. Upcoming meetings, student programs and services on 119.21 at 6.30, the correct council and 120.21 at 11.30 in the morning and the finance and operations committee is on 126.21 at 6 p.m. There is no unfinished business. Public comment, Mr. Emma, anyone on the phones? Yes, sir, we have one individual on the phone who will admit, uh, area code 617-967-8073. Thank you. If you can unmute yourself, Paul, go ahead. Please state your name and address and you have five minutes. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Beth Riley Deo. Can you hear me? Now, now. Can, can you turn your sound down in the background, please? All right, sorry about that. Okay. I'm trying to do two things at once. Uh, can you hear me though? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm just calling. My name's Beth Riley Deo, 12 Hubbard Place. Um, just calling as well as the earlier callers to advocate for full in-person learning. Um, it's the safest model to use with our students, being fully in every single day. Um, this hybrid model is not protecting our kids as much as, it, as you may think it is. Um, when kids aren't in school, they're on off days, uh, like the earlier caller said, possibly with grandparents or other caretakers, mixed in groupings that they shouldn't be. Um, also asking to shorten the length of the rollout. Um, the rollout isn't really based on science or data, if that's what you're looking at. Uh, we need our youngest learners in school full time as soon as possible. Also advocating for five full days. Um, this virus is not spread through surfaces um, as an early caller already said. So also looking for five full in-person school days. Um, I also should have started out saying that I, I think our teachers are doing an amazing job. I think that when they look back on their careers, this will probably be one of the hardest years um, that they've ever taught. And I just want to compliment how great they're doing. I also need some more transparency in your decision making skills um, as far as what you're using to make these decisions. If you're saying a uh, full remote Wednesdays for mitigation and cleaning, that's not based on any data or science. I can't get behind that. If you're saying full Wednesdays for teachers to meet and be by themselves and have some time, I can get behind that. Um, I just, um, I, I wanna make sure that our teachers are supported. I wanna make sure that our kids are in school more. Our kids aren't getting the services they deserve. Um, and that's it, thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Riley. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Emmett? No one else, Mr. Carey. All right, public comment is closed. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make a comment? Ms. Evans. 
All right, sorry, just had to make sure I was unmuted because I do that all the time. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on a couple of things because I've received a few emails in response to our last meeting. And I think there was an article in the rare reminder where a couple of people were quoted. So, um, you know, I will start by saying, you know, as respectfully as possible, I understand that this is a hard time and there's nothing to base any of our decisions on other than data that's pretty current. And we're trying to roll, make the best decisions we can. What I'm concerned with and what I'm hearing from a lot of people is the morale at the school level, at the teacher level is extremely low. And I know that these students are our priority. I've got two of my own, um, but I will say as a mom who has a full-time job and kids at home, I feel extremely lucky for, to work for a company as understanding and I am stressed out beyond stressed out. I was probably the first one to fill out that survey for you, Mr. Emmett, because I was so excited to see it. Um, I am worried about our teachers. I'm worried about the fact that they're not having a bigger voice. Like I feel like maybe our leader leader model may, has not been utilized as much as I would have liked to see it because what I'm hearing is these teachers just are heard about the, some of these teachers heard about this, the synchronous to asynchronous, asynchronous to synchronous um, at the same time that a parent heard about it. So that kind of stuff just makes me upset. And I just want to make sure that we're consulting with these, these teachers, because if they're stressed out, our kids are not getting everything that they possibly can. And I just want to make sure that they're feeling like they're taken care of too. Um, so I'm just wanting to re reiterate some, you know, those, those points. And what I'm hearing from teachers is they're stressed out. They're not feeling heard. Um, they're not receiving information in a timely way. And they're, and they just are basically having to work a lot more, put in extra time because it's kids. They're always, it's a calling. They're going to do is what they can for the kids, but <clears throat> these online um, lesson plans are different and they're different from in school. So they're ending up having to do kind of double duty and they're doing a fantastic job. I'm beyond impressed with our teachers. I'm beyond impressed with everything that I'm seeing from them. I'm worried for them. I want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can for them for they so they feel supported and heard and, you know, their their skill sets and everything that they have to offer is really being utilized in this situation. So I appreciate you letting me talk and that is all. Thank you, Mr. Michaels, I saw your hand go up. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Uh, just a few quick things. Uh, first through uh, you, Mr. Carey, to the entire group, I had mentioned at our finance operations committee meeting last time that um, I would ask that group for their comments, um, suggestions, or ideas, but I wanted to throw that out to the group. Um, so if board members could send any thoughts, concerns, ideas they had regarding how we rolled out the budget process last year, I wanted to get some feedback from you on that so that we can look to implement some of those ideas and thoughts into this year's budget process. So if you could get those um, to me and Mr. Carey, that would be great. Um, Secondly, uh, Mr. Superintendent, I was just wondering, um, piggybacking on the Wednesday full remote, if we could just get some more clarification because my understanding was that we did the Wednesday remote learning because we had two different cohorts and the, the Wednesday was needed to clean between those two cohorts. But with full remote, we're still talking about Wednesdays, with full in, we're still talking about Wednesday being a remote. So I'm just wondering if those groups are now mingling, why Wednesday remotes? And then the second piece is, I know we've read or seen the rollout of how we're rolling back into full, but we haven't seen a start date on that. And I'm wondering if, if that might sway how some people are reading the survey um, to say, yes, I'd go back to full in person if it was two months from now versus a month from now. Just if you had some more information on when that rollout would start and then the Wednesday question. Thank you. 
Yeah, I will uh, be happy to respond to that. Mr. Uh, Michaels, I'll make sure that that's in the Friday update. Um, this will give me an opportunity to uh, have a conversation with the director of the Central Connecticut Health District with regard to timing on the rollout. Um, obviously, you know, we take a look at a variety of different data points, um, and you've seen our 14-day rolling average in Weathersfield was around the 100 point. Uh, last week, I know it had dropped down to 61. I think it was 61.9. So that uh, updated data will come out again uh, uh, tomorrow, actually. So I have it in the Friday update for you. Thank you. Ms. Granado. Um, first, Michael, I'd like to apologize for interrupting your comments. It was about the... Um, um, academics versus the social and emotional curriculum. And I'll send you an email instead of interrupting next time. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Um, but I would like to comment again on the stress that the pandemic has put on our teachers and to comment on a possible change in the administration's approach to working with our teachers. Um, there may be some out there who are not comfortable hearing, again, concerns that the staff is under tremendous strain and stress during this COVID-19, because there's very few of us who aren't under a strain emotionally, physically, and mentally um, as this pandemic continues. My concern, and the reason I'm bringing this issue, teacher stress up again, is I want our students working with our multi-degreed, dedicated and hopefully not strained and stressed teachers who are putting their best efforts forward at this most challenging of times. I look for our educators not to be tense and stressed, but to be working with their students with their usual talent, confidence and knowledge, knowing that our students and staff are being emotionally cared for by the Weathersfield Public School System. Board members are not entering the schools to observe, and that only makes sense during this pandemic as we want as few people entering our buildings as possible. But this leaves us in the dark as to whether our Weathersfield Public School leader, leader philosophy and our Weathersfield Public School strategic plan are being implemented. Let me mention for all those to remind you, the Weathersfield Public School philosophy of management this leader leader philosophy is our philosophy for how to manage people in our education system. We are utilizing Lyle Kirkman as a systems consultant. His leadership model is being implemented in businesses and school systems across the country. To quote from a University of Pennsylvania research of leader leader quote, the common thesis is to give more voice autonomy and authority to school faculty and to allow and encourage teachers to have input into decisions on key issues in their schools and that, that impact their teaching and work. And another very important quote, schools with higher level of both instructional leadership and teacher leadership have greater student achievement. Now with that leadership philosophy in place, I know our superintendent is working on his goals and his goal number one is to focus on K through six academics with an action step that he is to meet with leadership teams to assess students learning needs. I am hearing from teachers, and this is their quote, we are not being asked for any input, none at all. Therefore, no input from leadership teams, why? Why are we not seeking information from our teachers, the instructional leadership, the teacher's leadership that will increase student achievement? This valuable source is being left out of the important decisions when it comes to teaching our students in this most unusual time. All of us know that we are working from a strategic plan that was developed and accepted for the years 2018 to 2024 our SKINI plan was written specifically for the Weathersfield Public School. The plan is available to read on our website. So please give me a moment though to read just some of our strategic plan. Goal one is our student achievement strategy where we continuously restructure curriculum and instruction to provide students with a continuum of increasingly challenging opportunities to demonstrate and understand the desired behaviors such as academic success, social and emotional intelligence, collaborative problem solving, 
civic awareness and contributions and critical thinking. Now there's an action to all these goals that we have in our strategic plan. Action one, one of this goal is to develop teacher leaders to facilitate personalized learning. Another action, 1.3, is to provide ongoing professional development opportunities and embedded coaching. And action eight, and there's others there, to continue to develop administrators and teacher leaders to better enable them to help other teachers and all staff become more self-reflective about where and how they can make instructional improvements to support students. It's all there. So I bring the superintendent's goals and the strategic plan to your attention to explain that we are a system that for four years has believed that this philosophy of leadership and our strategic plan are the guides for the whole system. We have put on paper that administrators are to be working with their leadership teams, not just Zoom listening, but working together to find the best practices for the school year. So a possible solution to the strain and stress on our educators. Administrators work with them. They are our leaders in the classroom. Give them the support and let them use their voices as we design for them by using our strategic plan and the leadership model. If we follow our leadership philosophy and the strategic plan, we would be hearing our classroom educators' concerns and together we would be solving these problems. And who benefits the most? The students. So finally, I would like to know why after years of work to create our strategic plan and years of work to implement our leadership philosophy, we are not doing either. I expect an answer and I believe other board members would appreciate an answer too. So thank you. Thank you. Any other board comments? Ms. Paradise. Um, uh, Kelly and Bobby summed it up beautifully and Bobby did an excellent job. Uh, lots of research there and lots of uh, clear data. And I totally support, I haven't heard anybody say, and I've received messages too, that the leader leader model has been used. And um, I have asked other board members if they've heard, maybe I just missed it because I was away, that leader leader is being used. It seems to me that I've gotten information that says we are being told by principals what to do. Um, I, I, I don't know why we spent so much time on leader leader and having all those uh, staff or board uh, conferences or meetings to develop such a great program. And then we had so much positiveness come out of that. And now it's just like died on the vine. So I too with Bobby and Kelly would like to know because I hate hearing the morale. I hear hate, I hear, I hate hearing people say they're wishing they could quit when I know they're excellent teachers. So I would like to uh, have an answer with Bobby and Kelly on how come or what on, in, in print, what meetings were held with the leader models of Highcrest or the leader person of Webb or the leader person of Dean. Even if you can't meet with the whole leadership group because I have all the leadership groups of each school, um, but if you can't meet with the group, when, is, when is, have you met with them to say, we're gonna go to uh, synchronous on Wednesdays, and this is how it's going to look. What are your thoughts? That's all they're asking, I think. And um, I appreciate Bobby's research and Kelly's comments too. And I'm just backing them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paradise. Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three things, but first I want to also agree with Kelly, Bobby, and Elaine. Uh, Chuck and I went to the Emerson Williams virtual PTO meeting last week. And among the things we heard was from teachers who do feel that their input hasn't been fully uh, listened to. Um, and I, you know, I do want to say the administration is working really hard and I respect all the work that you do, but I really want to do an extra shout out to the teachers. This is the first meeting of the year and they are working so hard, almost doing double duty with our kids. And it's an amazing job they're doing. And in some instances, in many instances, they don't feel fully heard. And we certainly heard that at the Emerson Williams 
uh, PTO meeting, and I'm also hearing from teachers that I'm friendly with in the district. So that is something I think we do need to tighten it up. It is important and I want to support what Kelly and Bobby and Elaine said, said there. Secondly, I wanted to let you know briefly, the Career Advisory Board is interviewing mock interviews with students this week and next week. And if anybody wants to, I have two Weathersfield High School students that I'm interviewing with uh, virtually. If anyone who wants to participate that in the future uh, to interview high school students and to give them those uh, skills, uh, love it. You can privately uh, tell me you're interested in that. And third, just a question for you, Michael, because um, I wasn't sure. I think the survey went out to elementary and middle school parents, but not necessarily high school parents. I'm a high school parent, as most of you know, but I didn't receive the survey. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, the high school had sent out its own survey last week, and I had sent out a communication uh, actually yesterday uh, that announced that piece. So the survey that went out today went out to uh, pre-K through eight. The high school sent out a survey last week. Um, as of this morning, we had about 240 or so responses. So check your email again, and I will make sure that I let the high school administration know to resend so that everybody gets it. So that might have been, thank you. That might have been my miss. My apologies. Thank you for the clarification. No worries. That's it, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Any other comments? Yes, Chuck. I have some comments, please. Yes, Mr. Cassio. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Michael, I just need a, uh, some clarification regarding the activities or sports or clubs that are not going to participate. Are we still uh, rely, uh, responsible for payment of the stipend for that particular sport or activity? Yeah, Mr. Cassio, we're going to look to like, let's take wrestling, for example. Wrestling is one of those high risk sports. We're going to look for alternatives um, for them to do so that the coach will still be engaged. So they may be doing cardiovascular training. They wouldn't be engaged in something that was, you know, within six feet. Um, cheerleading the same scenario there. They wouldn't be doing stunting, which is the same situation that we had in the fall. Um, we may have them go to a game and participate, but it's got to be six feet apart. It's got to be masks and they would cheer, but not be able to do any of the stunting. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. And then I would like to get on the uh, communication train of our other board members that came forward and ditto the comments that they came to. Um, I think it's imperative that communication start uh, from the top down and that everyone has a clear understanding of transparency of what's going on. We are in a, a situation that no one knows what to do, but I think um, most importantly, the uh, staff morale is imperative that we look at it and make sure what's the, what's the deal. Um, what is a typical Wednesday going to do look like now? Um, is our school going to, well, apparently we're going to employ more substitutes for them to do uh, children's needs or reporting or uh, have a, a, a team meeting. Um, you know, I, my understanding is that those were done on a Wednesday as well. Now we have the ability to hire uh, non-certified teachers uh, to, to do subbing. But more importantly, uh, the shift to uh, teaching is new for everyone. But in doing this, um, we have to make sure our staff is well equipped from the top down within the, the principals to this faculty. Because my eyes, uh, a school can run with the staff that we have. They're the individuals that move the ship and get the students learning. Um, principals need to be seen, need to be uh, heard, but more importantly, they need to listen. And uh, I'm hearing from staff that some of our principal staff is uh, not heard or not seen or are complacent. So I think that needs to be reviewed and looked at. I'm not in the buildings, but I'm hearing like everyone else is hearing. So at all levels, um, I think the communication is well needed. And I think we need to do a wellness check and a tune up for everyone so that they're able to uh, 
meet their personal needs, to make sure they're uh, accepted and doing a good job. Our faculty should be commended. Our administrative team should be commended. It's all new waters that we're swimming in. But I think um, we as a board are encouraging you as the superintendent and administrative to keep the communication line open and uh, make sure the principals are getting the same communication and talk, so sharing that with the staff. Because I'm, um, many of us have already said it and we're hearing it. So I know there's a dialogue for communication that has to go through the unions, but we are a small district, but I just would hope that um, we can make some change and I would like to uh, continue that movement. Thank you. Mr. Emmett, can you check and see if Mr. Uh, Lesser is trying to get back in? I don't see him on at this point in time. Okay, because he got booted. So if you can just keep an eye out. Eye out. You got it, sir. Tiago, did you have your hand raised, bud? Oh, yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to attest to the, uh, in my viewpoint, the phenomenal job that um, teachers have been doing throughout the school year. I spent a lot of time with my teachers, talking with them, and um, they're really facing you know hardships like everybody in these times. I feel like their resilience and also their flexibility and understanding with students is just something to uh, commend. And uh, I, I think so. all the staffers and teachers are just doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make comments? Mr. Ms. Paradise. Mr. Carey, I, as chair of this board, I would like you to follow up and get us a written explanation or at least some kind of outline that how the teachers are involved in these decision makings. I don't want to see these leader leader committees or uh, things put, put on the shelf. I want something written or given back to us as feedback from Bobby, Kelly, Johns, and, and my statements. We want to know how they are involved. So please do that for me. Yes, Mr. Emmett heard and he, he will follow up with the, the question. Correct, Mr. Emmett? That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Lester says he's still trying to get in. <laughs> I don't have him coming in right now. Here he comes. Hang on. All right. There he is. There he is. Welcome back, Mr. Lesser. <laughs> yes, is he on mute? No, he's back. Now he's back. His audio was taking forever. Welcome back. I'm back. Sorry about that, everybody. No Hello. problem. Mr. Healy, did you have comments, sir? Yeah, just a couple. Okay. Uh, I've listened to the comments of my colleagues, and I respect what their opinions uh, and their right to make them. Uh, I, let me backtrack a little bit here. What what, what I see is uh, what's going on a little bit. I make no pretense of knowing what's going on in the schools because I don't visit the schools and I haven't made a habit of it unless I'm invited. I don't believe it's the role of a board of ed member uh, to micromanage the people uh, that work for the school system, starting with the leadership. We set broad policy guidelines, which we have done. We've adopted uh, management techniques and guidelines, including the leader leader model. Um, and we are here to uh, do what is best in our opinion as elected leaders that serves the needs of the children of this district and their parents. Those are the priorities. And how we do that is how we're judged at the polling place and, and how we are judged in the performance of those kids. And the given, I'm not gonna belabor where we are now, but I will say this, everyone is under stress, everyone. No one has a monopoly on stress in their life, whether they're a teacher, a police officer, a doctor, uh, or a small business person. So let's start with that. No one has more stress or not. The teachers of this school district, I believe are doing a fantastic job doing the best they can. If for some reason they feel that any part of their relationship with the administration is being violated, disregarded, they have a way to communicate that through channels to the top. 
Certainly some of the board members who were teachers understand that. So uh, I get a little miffed when uh, this becomes a, uh, a session where teachers come forward with their morale problems, with their long suffering indignities uh, and indicate that in the course of a few months, nothing they say or do is heard by people at the higher rungs and they are somehow prevented from doing their duties. If that is the case, they should put it in writing and should put it for us to examine as board members through the chairman rather than work uh, by just complaining or passing their thoughts on from others. They're entitled to do that. But we, or I, as an elected official of this board, I'm entitled to say that the teachers were hired by this, by this school district to perform a professional function of which they are paid handsomely. They are, after three years, pretty secure in their job position. They enjoyed many benefits and many courtesies of this position. And the teachers uh, have a responsibility, regardless of uh, their morale, to do the best they can for the children of this district. And I might add that there are many parents, including the four that addressed us early on, who are desperate to get their children back into school full time, in class, learning not remotely, not hybridly, but full-time. And this superintendent has made it the goal and this board has made it our goal. And that should be something we should be focused on like a laser beam. And if the, if the union people and the teachers have a problem with anything, they have a responsibility to bring it through channels. And if they cannot fulfill that responsibility, they have options. They can quit, they can retire, they can take extended leave. But I am a little annoyed and disappointed that this is the second or third meeting in a row where they have to air all this as if they are some put upon class. Yes, there are many challenges out there. And if they have problems with management or us, then they should be able to come forward in the open and spell it out and let's work it out. But uh, I don't feel that this uh, sort of uh, gang tackling here is not going to serve any purpose other than to create more disunity and more bad feelings. Now, if we have to work this out, let's work it out. But I refuse to believe that all of the suggestions and ideas of the teachers in this school district, of all the teachers are not being heard. If they are, then I'll be the first one to join with my friends who have just exercised that. But I think our superintendent and his staff are entitled to provide an explanation of where they're going and that we allow them to run the school district through our policies. And if the teachers unions, their teachers don't like it, well, then they should, they should exercise their rights under the contract to disagree and to grieve. And that's all I have to say on that. Thank you, Mr. Ely. Yes, Ms. Granato. Yeah, and Chris, I don't wanna go tit for tat here on this. Um, you have all the rights in the world to say what you think. But I just wanna ask you if you've ever taught a class of little ones, let's say maybe eight or nine you know, years old. You know, Bobby, that's not- I know, don't interrupt. No, 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 I'm not gonna play that game with you because- and I'm not playing it with I you. am not a teacher. I never professed to be a teacher. You're I don't have children. Have the I'm elected to represent the interests of the taxpayers and the teachers and the parents and the students and weigh those responsibilities. And I just and said, I didn't want bag, to- This is a bad job on your behalf and you don't right. like the way it's being run. And so now you're trying- Point of order, Chuck. Point of order, Chuck. It's not a debate. Let mm -hmm. Bobby speak. I really did have the floor. You had yes, the floor right. some question though. So you relinquished the floor to Mr. Healy. No, I didn't. You I said, didn't. have you ever taught? You asked him a question and he's responding. But he has to wait till she finishes. But she asked the question he was going to answer. Yeah, but he can she can answer it after she finishes. Uh, uh, go ahead. I, I you know something, Chris. Uh, there's the there are two programs in place. One is our strategic plan, and the other one is the leadership model. Not not either one are being used right now. And if we were using them, we would not have these problems. I guarantee you, we would not have them. And what is the evidence based on that? Is that your opinion? The fact that it worked for four years. Well, it, is that your opinion that it's not working now based on what data? We, what data we, are you? 
we had, we had teachers come to board meetings to tell us that this program was working. And one of the comments I know I made to them is, great, we'll let this program mature. And it's a philosophy, it's not a program. And we will let it mature, which again, we didn't do. I will say that's one thing educators are famous for, is not allowing programs, philosophies to mature so that everybody gets into it and gets it to the best it can be. We are not doing either one. It's like the strategic plan doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. It's, it's, it, it, it exists as a, I, I, I'm not trying to be difficult here. I'm trying to understand when you say, let it mature. We can't have board meetings like we did where people come in. They're not here on, in this virtual meeting telling us, are you saying that, the, that there is no collaboration going on anywhere in the school district under leader leader model? Is that what you're accusing? The administration of? I'm just curious. Is that the, is that I, the case? I, you know, so that, uh, first of all, I just want to show you there are actually, there's books out on this by Lyle Kirkman. And if you read them, you'll understand it. It's almost an upside down triangle where the teachers have the input of what to do. What are the best decisions for these children? And the central office is to facilitate all that. It is a whole different way of management. And the board approved it. And everyone went to workshops. We spent hours on this. Okay, I understand that. I, I'm aware of that. I've been on the board for three years, but I'm, what you're saying is, your point is that all of that has fallen aside over the last three or four months. Yeah, but, yes. And, and I don't know if the excuse is the pandemic, because we did talk about barriers. Pandemic was never brought up, but is the pandemic the barrier? Is that why we're not doing strategic plan or we're not doing the leadership model? But I think strategic oh. plan is something you measure at the end of the year with various indicators of scores and everything else, correct? I mean- No, you know, we're supposed to be checking it quarterly. Okay, so, so you're saying the quarterly data doesn't support that? We haven't heard any um, reports. So you're saying there's no quarterly, there's no data to support any of the, all right. I, Look, I mean, you've made, you've made your point. I've made my point. We'll let the superintendent respond. But I, I'm just a little, uh, I, it's a philosophical point. The teachers have input. The teachers are critical. But, but, the superintendent, but the school district, the management, the direction is by the school board and the administrators. Do you not agree with that? I don't agree with that. Okay, well, then we have a philosophical agreement how school board should be managed, I guess. Is but the, our philosophy is, is not what you just said. Well, then if, if why are we Board of Ed members if the teachers have the inherent right to run the schools is what you're saying. No, because they have to do a great job, that's why. But no. No, 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 I'm not, but what you're arguing, no, but what I'm, let me finish. We, are, we go out and campaign and be, are elected to be Board of Ed members, correct? And we are elected to set policies, to rule on pr procedures, to adopt the things you talked about, to rule on uh, disciplinary actions, to negotiate contracts, but you're saying all that's fine, but the actual management and the curriculum and everything should be weighted more heavily towards the teachers of the school district. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. I just want everyone to know that because uh, that's, that's somewhat contradictory to what I think is an acceptable practice, but if that's the way you feel and that's the way you think it should be run, then there's really no reason reason to have a board of education, I think, or or administrators, right? No, I don't agree with you there either. Well, the, you can't have one or the other. In other words, it's all part of the continuum. We hire teachers to teach. We have a but, contract. I, you know, I don't want to get into this, but Chris, I wouldn't want you running a hospital and not talking to a doctor. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to explain what I think is the structure of management to run a school district, the premise of it. And it's if like people don't like the premise, they can, no, they don't like the premise, they can vote us out. But my point is this, that teachers obviously have a critical part of our team. And when I understand that, and that part of leader, le part of leader, leader is a collaboration. Would you not agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. That doesn't mean the teachers get what they want just because they're part of a discussion. Mm -hmm. And if you feel they're not being listened to, that's certainly something that we can talk about, but there needs to be some sort of factual example of people being turned away or meetings being canceled. And if that's the case, then, then, then show it. What, what's that? I, I have it all. I have all these anecdotal uh, moments from teachers who have not 
been heard. Pay have, they, have, pay they presented, have they presented those? Yes, the, they, presented it the, they presented it also to the union. Okay, and does the union grieve that, Superintendent? Yeah. Yes. They've, they filed a grievance about this? Yes. I, I haven't seen a grievance at this point in time. I was told this afternoon that you were oh, I, uh, I didn't filed. Okay, so once again, there's something missing here. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm missing. Did the grievance just go to you, Michael? Did it only go to your level? I, I have no idea. This is the first I'm hearing of it. So they shared with you a grievance, Bobby, before it was shared with the superintendent. Is that what you're telling me? You have no, I, I don't have the grievance. I have the evidence for the grievance. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. We well, if they're going to file a grievance, then we'll do that. There's a contractual issue discussing this grievance that may or may not be coming. That shouldn't be discussed at this moment. Am I correct, Mr. Donahue? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Carey, I, I think this conversation probably would be best served um, happening outside of tonight's meeting. Thank you. Well, I'm glad we found out what was going on at least. I would just like to comment just one thing, Chris Healy, that you said the board is responsible for setting policy and setting budget. And you are absolutely right. But the piece is that Bobby's sharing is that we passed a policy of leader leader or a, a condition of leader leader and a strategic plan that we worked on for many months, many years, and that we want to have evidence from the superintendent that is being used. That's all we're asking, that the teachers, you know, we've passed that as a board, that we want the leader leadership model in place, and we want um, the strategic plan looked at, not shelved, as one other board member used to say, John, you'll know. Um, and, and all we want, we used to get a Friday update that said leadership, a strategic plan item 1.1 is being used in Highcrest when they are doing blah, 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 blah. You know, we don't get that Friday update anymore with those kind of references. And so we have no evidence anymore that the strategic plan is being used, nor do we have any evidence that the leader leader model, which we passed, is being used. So that's all she, I think Bobby is referring to, if I'm clear, correct me, Bobby, if I'm no, wrong. No, thank you, Elaine. Well, that's perfectly, I, I, again, I have no problem with any of this. I'm just trying to, again, before we get too far afield here, I think we need to remind ourselves of what everyone's role is, both under yeah. the statutes and under our, our town charter, and that people need to accept those roles. And if, if people feel that they are, their rights are being abrogated under the contract, they have a right to, to, to exercise that. And I support that. But what I, what, I get a, what, I, what I get concerned about is when people say, well, this person told me this, and this person told me that, and I heard this and I heard that, and that's not good. I don't think that's a constructive way to, to conduct business as a board. I just don't. Oh, John, I, I, agree. I don't I think it's fair to everybody either. We've shared enough on this topic, and Michael, I'm, we'll get back to us on our concerns. I think Thank that's you. a pretty I, close. I think that I see the whole thing out of listening to the conversation from the Emerson Williams PTO meeting to our comments that we did at December 22nd to the comments that we're hearing right now is teachers are feeling ignored um, and with their communication. Uh, they also, you talk about a barrier. Um, I think the barrier is the lack of honest communication between the stakeholders. We got to look at the big picture here and the stakeholders at that being uh, between the teachers, parents, administration, and the board. We're a part of the stakeholder for our community of Wethersfield. So I think that in itself, um, for since December 22nd until now we're at uh, July, January 12th, I hope it's not July, but January 12th, we've, we've, we're hearing the same situation. So I hope that the administration is not ignoring the teachers with their communications or thoughts, whether they communicate to the building principal or they have to communicate through their union. That's all I'm asking for. I want honest and open communication. We're not a New York City or Wethersfield, Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members? Yes, Mr. Riley. I, I think Mr. Emmett should, you know, have the opportunity to produce um, some of those um, times when the leader leader model is being used and have an opportunity to respond. And I think in 
you know, the break between December 22nd and now, school wasn't in session for a good part of that time. Thank you. Miss Evans, and sorry I stuttered. I always want to call you by your maiden name. You can. I like okay. it. Okay. Since I grew up calling you that. It's okay. Um, I just wanted to clarify two points. So I definitely want to make sure that my comments are not taken as um, accusatory towards Michael or Sally or any of the administration, because that's not what I'm saying. Um, and I, I, I also want to, and I appreciate Chris's perspective, just like I do Bobby's, even though it doesn't quite align with how I feel. Um, as a parent, and a board member, I think it's neat that I get to hear from all different levels. And as a parent, I just want to make sure that my that the, the, the people that are teaching my my kids are are supported and have everything they need in order to do that. And it's just a tough time right now. Um, to the teachers that were out there that that sent me some feedback, I'm open to hearing it. Chris is right. I'm not Trent. I'm not Michael. Um, if you're not feeling heard, and I appreciate your feedback because we did set up leader, 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 and it's a difficult time right now. And we're trying to figure out where to focus our energies. And I get that. Um, I appreciate getting the time to speak here in the forum. And I just want to say as much, I appreciate all the work that everybody's doing because this is a nightmare. It's really hard to figure out how to do it. And I and all I wanted to do is give you feedback of what we were hearing. And some of the some of the teachers are finding a hard time feeling heard. I'm glad they've gone to their union. I hope they feel comfortable going to you guys so you can address some of the issues. So I appreciate getting that, getting this forum. I certainly don't want my comments to be taken as some sort of personal attack on the administration because I don't envy how hard you guys have to work and what you have to weigh to put every all of this together and i've said a thousand times that my kids are better off for being in the school system so i thank you for all your work and i just wanted to be really clear to any of the teachers that had sent me comments i appreciate it there's not much i can respond to because i'm not your union rep but um you know as a parent i just want to make sure that my teachers are happy because you get more from my kids when my te the teachers aren't as stressed that was my point so i appreciate you letting me clarify that and hopefully that'll end this conversation for tonight. Any other comments? All right, I'll end. I, I just want to thank the Emerson Williams PTO. They invited me to uh, come to their meeting to listen in. I appreciate it. I always enjoy going out, listening to what's going on. Mr. Lesser was able to join me, so we learned a lot. Uh, also, I know we've gotten a lot of emails about full reopening and I have three kids in the school system. I have a third grader who I'm dying to get back in full time and, and I'm right behind everyone else who thinks we should be opening up, but I just know it's gonna be done when it's safe and when Mr. Emmett deems it safe with the Department of Health. And I'm hoping it happens sooner than later, especially for the younger ones. And I, I couldn't agree more with the emails that came in. I am an educator, I've taught first grade, third grade, I've taught the younger grades and I know how valuable it is to be in the buildings. So it, it is a, goal of Mr. Emmett, goal of this board, that we get students back in these buildings, but it needs to be safe for all. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second? second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes and we lost somebody. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.